Welcome to Snap Tutorial 3A2, Custom Blocks with Inputs. Last time we made a block called square that draws a square. But I don't really like this block because unlike the other blocks in the motion menu, it doesn't have room for an input to say how big the square should be. So I'd like to fix that. We can edit a block by finding either an instance of the block in the scripting area or the main block in the menu where it lives and depending on your computer right click or control click on the block and you'll see this menu and the very last thing is edit don't hit delete block definition by mistake when you click edit the block editor opens and you can see the definition of your block. What we want to do is add an input to say how big the square should be. Notice up in the hat block that there's a plus sign on each side of the word square that lights up if I hover over it. Clicking one of these plus signs tells Snap that we'd like to add an input in that position before or after this word. I'm going to put an input after the word square. So I click here and I see this dialog that says create input name. I'm going to call it size. Now there are other things you can do in this dialog, but don't worry about them for now. Just type in the name and click OK. Notice what happens in the picture of the block, the prototype of the block, up here in the hat block in the block editor, there's now a variable called size, just like the variables you find in the palette when you make a variable with the make a variable button. And also, if I click apply, you'll see that the square block, every instance of the square block changes so that it now has a space for an input. But the input isn't going to do anything unless we use it in some way. Uh, I'd like this size input to determine the size of the square. I'm not going to change the number of sides, that's always 4. And I'm not going to change the angle of turning, which is always 90 degrees. Instead, I'm going to pick up size and drag it down to the move block. So instead of move 100 steps, it now says move size steps. So now, if I put 50 in the block and click the green flag, it makes a smaller square. We can make any size square you like. So let's try 150. And then we get a bigger square. So that's really it. That's how you make inputs to your blocks. You can give them as many inputs as you like. Notice, by the way, that there are now three plus signs in the prototype in between all the words as well as at the beginning and end. So you can add new inputs before or after this one. Many of the blocks that are in the menu to begin with have a unit after the input slot move so many steps, turn so many degrees. If you'd like to do that, I can click on a plus sign here, click title text, and then put in the word steps. And now my block says square so many steps. OK. At this point, let's pause for some exercises. Here are three of them. Make a command block called squares that takes an input saying how many squares to draw. And draw just fixed size. I use 20 squares, as many squares as the input says. You can also make a reporter block called grade that takes a letter grade like B minus and converts it to a number. In the grading scale we use at Berkeley, A is 4, B is 3, D 
down to D is one and F is zero, and then plus adds three tenths minus subtracts three tenths. So B minus is 2.7. And finally, make a predicate less than or equal to, which reports true if the first input is less than the second or equal to the second, but false if the first input is greater than the second. So pause the video and do that. Okay, I'm going to do one of the exercises that we just talked about. I'm going to make a block for less than or equal to. By the way, there's a shortcut for make a block. Instead of going to the variables menu, you can control click or right click on the background of the scripting area and see this menu that has a make a block item in it and get this make a block dialog. So we're going to make an operator. Its name is less than or equal to, and it's a predicate. Because this is an infix operator, it goes in between the two values it's comparing. I'm going to put an input on the left, A, and one on the right, B. Usually I like to give variables meaningful names, but there really isn't anything to say to separate these two, so the names are pretty arbitrary. Now, we provide blocks that compute less than, equal to, and greater than. So how should we use those to make a less than or equal to block? Well, a predicate is a kind of reporter, so it's going to report a value. And it should report true if either of two things is true. Either A is less than B or A is equal to B. So I'm going to use the OR block and grab a less than. So A is less than B. Or A is equal to B. By the way, as you're seeing here, you have to be careful about exactly when you let go of a variable block, or you might be replacing more than you really want to. And that's it. A is less than or equal to B if A is less than B, or A is equal to B. There are other ways to do it, but this is perhaps the most straightforward. Now I can look down here. Here's my block. And we'll try it out. Is 5 less than or equal to 7? Yes, that's true. Is 5 less than or equal to 2? No, that's false. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So that's my block. For the other two exercises, I'm just going to give you one hint for grade, which is I found it useful to make helper functions grade letter and grade sign. So grade letter of, let's say, B minus gives me 3, and grade sign of B minus gives me negative 3 tenths. And if you make those two first, that'll help you write the grade block. That's it. Custom blocks with inputs.